Hey everyone, welcome back to Natek of Cebu. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of GPS or the Global Positioning System. Whether you're navigating through city streets or exploring the great outdoors, GPS plays a crucial role in guiding us to our destinations. So, let's unravel the mysteries behind this revolutionary technology. Before we delve into the nitty-gritty of GPS, let's take a quick trip back in time. The concept of satellite-based navigation began in the early 1960s as a U.S. military project called Navstar GPS. It wasn't until 1978 that the first GPS satellite was launched, and by 1995, the system reached full operational capability with a constellation of 24 satellites. But how exactly does GPS work? Well, it's all about triangulation. GPS receivers on Earth communicate with satellites orbiting the planet, calculating distances based on the time it takes for signals to travel. By triangulating these distances from multiple satellites, your device can pinpoint your location with remarkable accuracy. The applications of GPS are truly endless. From turn-by-turn -turn navigation in our cars to precision agriculture in vast fields, GPS technology touches almost every aspect of our lives. It's used in aviation, for precise navigation, in logistics, for tracking shipments, and even in outdoor recreation for mapping hiking trails. While GPS is incredibly accurate, it's not without its limitations. Factors like tall buildings, dense foliage, or even atmospheric conditions can affect signal strength and accuracy. That's why newer systems like WAAS and EGNOS have been developed to enhance GPS accuracy, especially in challenging environments. GPS has come a long way since its inception. With advancements in technology, We've seen the introduction of new satellite constellations and improved accuracy with each generation. The latest GPS-3 satellites promise even greater precision and reliability, paving the way for future innovations. What does the future hold for GPS? Well, the possibilities are limitless. We're already seeing GPS being integrated into autonomous vehicles, enabling them to navigate safely and efficiently. Indoor positioning systems are also on the rise, offering precise navigation inside buildings where GPS signals may be weak. Now, let's debunk some common myths about GPS. One misconception is that GPS only works outdoors. While it's true that GPS signals can be obstructed by buildings or dense forests, many modern devices use a combination of GPS, Wi-Fi, and cellular signals for indoor positioning. Here are some practical tips for maximizing your GPS experience. First, Ensure your device's firmware is up to date to take advantage of the latest improvements. Second, always carry a backup map or have an offline map available in case of signal loss. And finally, familiarize yourself with your device's settings to customize your navigation experience. 
before we wrap up, let's hear from some individuals who rely on GPS in their daily lives. These stories highlight just how indispensable GPS has become in our modern world. Very good morning guys. I hope you all well. Today I'm going to demonstrate you how you can drive a car with the navigation. As you know, one in five will go without navigation and rest of them will go with the navigation. That's known as the independent driving. If you are going without navigation, even then you can do, Gemini will tell you to do independent driving, but he will tell you to follow the signs. For example, he will say, okay, take second road on the left or third, first road on the left or third road on the right or whatever. And after that, he will say, follow the sign for Cheatham Hill or follow the sign for Chadderton or follow the sign for Manchester City Centre or blah, blah, blah. Then you need to follow the signs. But if you're going with the navigation, there are so many learner drivers, they, they can't figure out what navigation is saying and how to follow the set map. That is why I'm going to upload this video. Okay, so that's very easy. But the thing is, most of the learner driver, what they do, they keep looking on a navigation. So if you keep looking on a navigation, that is where you can make mistakes. Sometimes you may go in the wrong lane, or sometimes you slow down because you are looking on a navigation, so obviously, or otherwise you may go fast a bit. So that is where examiner can penalize you and you can fail your driving test. The best thing how to follow the set nav is to listen what navigation is saying. So like for example, and navigation will show you few things like warnings well before, like for example, see this blue line and this is a butterfly. This butterfly is your car and you are following this blue line. You can see this white arrow. That is what indicating you where you are turning. So see this is a black line. This black line, all those black lines are irrelevant roads. It means Wherever you see these black roads, you're not going there because they are irrelevant roads. The how you can take better guide. I will guide you when we move off, but you just remember that you are a butterfly. You are following this blue line. So let's start from here, first of all, and then see what navigation say and how we can do that. So let's start from here. I'm going to move off. Like just pretend I am in my 20 minute driving independent drive. So I'm checking all my blind spots, indicator and driver. So navigation is taking me bare right. So she's saying bare right. So I don't need to look, I'm just listening. So Jane said bare right. So I'm just bare right. Okay, let me pull up on the left to guide or something. Where is signal and nicely brake to stop when I'm close to the curb. Neutral handbrake of the pedals, cancel indicator, and then I'm going to off the pedals. Okay, now look, this black is a left turning. So we are taking this left. So obviously, when we are coming here, we will not signal here. If you signal here, you are misleading other road users, so you will be penalized and you can fail your driving test. So what you will do, you will come. As soon as you approach nearby or just after, you can give left indicator because you're going left here. So when you're going left here, you can see this white arrow is guiding you going left. Then you can see on top here, there's another guide. You can see big arrow is left and then small arrow is right. It means after 150 yards, we are turning left and then turning right. So you can see blue line is coming here and the blue line is going there. The how you can follow the set left. So let's start again. Checking all my blind spots. Indicator right, move off. Okay, so see, after this black, irrelevant road, I'm checking my mirror. And then I am signaling left. At, At the end, end of the road, turn left. So then navigation take saying, the second right. so she is giving you warning in advance that turn left and then second right. So I'm turning left here. Then approximately 160 yards at the lights, I'm turning right. So I'm checking center, the right After middle. 100 yards, Signal turn right. right. So she's saying after 100 yards, turn right. And sometimes when she come close, 
she will give you the final warning she will say turn right with a different tone her tone will be different first she will be very polite she say 160 yards or 150 yards turn right and when you come too close to the junction then she may say turn right with a different tone it means that's your last warning when you're turning right so let's turn see. right see she said turn right at this time before she said 150 yards turn right the how you can figure out so when navigation is not saying anything you keep going straight ahead so at the moment navigation is not saying anything so what i'm doing my eyes are on the road and i'm going straight ahead so if I want to see the navigation, I will just have a quick glance. That's it. You will not focus yourself to just keep looking on a navigation. So two second glance is very dangerous. You will just have a very little glance After and eyes back on the road. Yards, turn left. So she then said, take the third right. Yeah. So she's given me warning in advance, which is very easy. So she's saying 300 yards, turn left and then third right. So she will say, that warning again when I'm going too close. This time she will say, turn left. Turn left, so, then take the third right. So when she said, turn left, it means that is the last warning. That is where you need to go. So I'm following this white arrow again. Few more minutes, I will keep you with the navigation. So I got the warning already. We're going left and then turn right. You can see there's a white arrow I'm turning and there's a big arrow and then small arrow which is indicating me I am turning left and then after some point I'm turning right so this is a very well in advance warning so what I will do when I turn left I will prepare myself to turn right so how to prepare myself to turn right obviously I will use my MSPSL routine and if there are two lanes obviously I will move over to the right hand lane if there's only one lane I will just go near the center white line. So let's see what we're going to do when we turn left here. So we're turning left here and then we can understand this is a one road at the moment, one lane at the moment I mean. And after then, 200 yards turn right. So she's saying after 200 yards turn right. So I'm not signaling because there's a black one k Redwind road. So after this point I will check center mirror indicator turn right. right and I'm in my filter lane already priority to the oncoming traffic I will let him go first no one else is coming and I'm turn right so what you are doing you are following this blue line you are a butterfly at the moment and there's a guide on top if you want to see the navigation you will just have a quick glance you will not keep looking on a navigation same as when you're going with the navigate without navigation the examiner will guide you what examiner will mention you? He will mention you, okay, you'll keep driving the car until unless I direct you to left or right. So same as when you're driving with the navigation, you're going with the navigation, no need to take any action until unless she says something. So at the moment I can see she is taking me straight, 500 yards, I'm going straight. So I have no need to look on my navigation. I will just look on the road, which lane is going straight. If I keep looking on a navigation, what happens? I may go in a wrong lane. Then I can fail for my test. So better to pay little attention on a navigation, not too much. I hope you fully really understood. If you have any question to answer, please you can leave feedback. So I'll come back to you. Thank you very much for watching this video. At the next intersection, turn left. Turn right. Recalculating. Continue straight ahead to Saratoga Springs. You have reached your destination. If you have some questions about GPS, just put it in the comment section and I'll try to answer them or I may take them up in the next video. Thanks! And that's a wrap for today's vlog on GPS. We've explored its history, how it works, its applications, and even debunk a few myths along the way. I hope you found this journey through the world of GPS as fascinating as I did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.